In France, in the dying stages of the war in Europe, terrain, weather, and enemy action isolated our troops. Our troops had been cut off from supply sources and vital air protection. The solution of helping our men was one of typical GI ingenuity. Food and medical supplies were packaged into compact units to aid the hurt and hungry. The units were then packed protectively into 105 millimeter shells and ready for delivery to our troops. The idea? To actually furnish supplies by ballistic means. And it worked. Yet in spite of its great potential, the idea was quickly forgotten in the quest for victory. Now, nearly 15 years later, the American soldier's ingenuity is again remembered with Convair dynamic delivery. The lover, a ballistic resupply vehicle. At Convair San Diego, where industry keeps pace with the progress of technology, the Lobber project was begun. Here, from experienced engineering know-how, a small team was selected to build from scratch and developed from concept idea a ballistic resupply missile from company funds. In just 58 manufacturing days, the Lobber was a ready-to-fire reality. Here, at an army base near Barstow, California, the efficiency of an extremely simple ballistic system was first proved. The system was familiar in principle to all army personnel. And that was simple mortar procedure. And again, the procedure worked. Six miles away from the launcher, the lobber landed well within the accuracy standards originally established. And the 50-pound payload survived impact in spite of less than maximum shoot deployment. Thirteen days later, December the 16th, 1958, on the anniversary of the launching of the Battle of the Bulge, another lobber demonstration was held. It was hoped by many that this vehicle could save lives in similar situations. These tests were to prove that ballistic delivery of necessary payloads was practical. The 135-pound lobber was designed to take supplies in 50-pound payloads and deliver them quickly and safely to any predetermined point up to six miles away. Three lobbers were fired for ballistic evaluation and therefore were not equipped with recovery chute nor nose spike. The purpose of these ballistic firings, shown here in extreme slow motion, was to evaluate pre-spinning and fin performance, as well as obtain ballistic data from the special instrumented launching base. The ballistic firings gave the first indication of range disbursement at the predicted range. In rapid succession, all missiles were readied and fired. Convair crews worked on 20-minute countdowns. On the afternoon of the same day, lobbers equipped with parachutes for recovery data were fired. The first of the parachute-equipped lobbers was placed into the instrumented launching base before the igniter was installed. In the same section of the missile was the parachute, which was activated by a simple mechanical timer preset for the desired altitude. The entire mechanism, in keeping with the simplified lobber concept, was simple and trouble-free. Even when the chute did not deploy properly, the payload was recoverable, although distorted in appearance 
the supplies could have been used by troops in the field. Since initial determinations did not provide adequate shoot data, a fifth lobber was fired in the same day to provide additional radar tracking data. Two days later, also at the Yuma test station, another lobber firing was scheduled for launcher data evaluation. In these Yuma tests, certain important factors were established. Spinning at launch was essential for accuracy. The fin operation worked effectively. Aerodynamically, the lobber principle was sound. Shoot deployment needed further study. In short, Yuma tests were highly successful. With the information gained at Yuma, a new parachute was developed and the lightweight launcher tube was completed. Two more tests were programmed at Camp Irwin in Barstow, California to test chute deployment and the new lightweight launcher tube. The turbine launcher tube differed from the previous launcher tube in that rifling was used. Results from data gathered during previous firings initiated the decision to use a single pack reef ribbon shoot on these tests. Every step of development and preparation had been carefully gone over to assure success. The briefing was short and to the point. The lobber was elevated for a 45 degree launch angle. The wind direction and velocity were measured. The chutes would deploy at a high elevation and the loads would land intact. One, the first lobber was successful in launching, shoot deployment, and impact. Accuracy heretofore impossible with a free spinning rocket had been realized. The second firing was equally successful. The lobber arrived on schedule. Six miles and 50 seconds later, a 50-pound payload was delivered on target. In fact, lobber appears to be as accurate as sophisticated and expensive ballistics missiles. All initial design concepts appeared to have been realized. Here was a ballistic resupply missile that could deliver. But even complete success is just the beginning. Although its feasibility has been demonstrated and Lobber has proved itself simple, reliable, accurate, portable, economical, and easily understandable by everyone familiar with standard army procedures, Lobber is more than that. The number of combat missions which Lobber can principally perform are growing every day. There is pyrotechnic delivery for battlefield illumination. There is the emergency supplying of troops in isolated areas with rations, clothing, ammunition, or medical supplies. Lobber can add new mobility to beachhead assaults. Lobber can also be used as a safe and expedient means of monitoring radioactive areas. Ordnance supply depots can be built up quickly under cover using Lobber. For offensive action with napalm, chemical, high explosives or nuclear warheads, Lobber could add new potential in the field. Wire laying and radio benchmark placement are additional areas of application where Lobber can add new dimensions to existing manpower. Even armored thrust could be supported by using Lobber as a fuel supply method. There is hardly any area where Lobber could not be useful. Lobber performance, simplicity, and mobility give it a many mission capability. Here is a vehicle that offers a net reduction in the overall logistic burden while extending tactical capacity. Initial design concepts have been realized. Lobber is simple, it's accurate, reliable, highly mobile, requires little time to master, and its cost is low and the lobber can be made available now.